Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Virtual Church on this, the third Sunday of Advent. For our carol sing this morning, let's begin with God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Ways that we often take for granted, 
ways that often go unnoticed by us in the midst of the hectic pace we set for ourselves, especially during this busy season as we prepare to celebrate Christmas. We pray that as we worship you this day, we will listen and think about the words of the carols we sing, the prayers as they are prayed, and hear what you are saying to us through the words of scripture and the message as it is proclaimed. As we worship you now, Lord God, we pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit and calm our hearts and minds so that we will fully concentrate on you. And all this we ask in Jesus' name as we pray using the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we invite you to join with us as we sing together, Angels We Have Heard on High. Of delight. When we gather for worship, it is a celebration 
an opportunity to rejoice in all that God is doing among us and beyond us. We welcome our neighbors and celebrate God's goodness. Even when we face difficulty and trouble, we sing a song of faith, confident that Jesus is able to redeem our suffering world. Together we are a sign of God's joy for the world. Let us pray. God of transformation, we rejoice that you lift up the lowly and bind up the brokenhearted. We marvel at your power to change hearts and lives. Fill us with your spirit this season, so that our voices declare your goodness and our lives proclaim your mercy in Jesus Christ. Amen. because I have some really great groaners this year. For instance, what do you get if you eat Christmas decorations? Tinsel-itis. What show does a squirrel see on Christmas Day? The Nutcracker. <laughs> what do you learn at Santa's Helper School? The Alphabet. <laughs> what do you get if you cross a duck and Santa? A Christmas quacker. What do you call a frog hanging from the ceiling? Mistletoe. What do you call a juvenile delinquent who doesn't believe in Santa? A rebel without a clause. And for all you English scholars, what do you call Santa's helpers? Subordinate clauses. What do you call a Santa who is broke? It's Saint Nicholas. And what did Adam say to, to his wife on Christmas? It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> All right. Thank you for putting up with me. Today on this, the third Sunday in Advent, we are lighting the candle of joy. And it begs the question, how is your joy this morning? Do you feel joyful? Right now, could you laugh at a good joke? Or do you feel the opposite? Are you struggling? Do you feel isolated or alone? Are you in pain? 
Are you dealing with painful memories you just can't shake? Is there something else today that is robbing you of joy? Or do you just not feel very joyful? Today, if you don't feel joyful, you're not alone. In fact, it seems kind of ironic that we're lighting the candle of joy on a Sunday when we can't even gather together for worship. And come to think of it, even in the Christmas story, there are elements that seem anything but joyful. Let's start with Mary, a teenage girl suddenly pregnant. Hmm. I'll bet there was no joy when she broke the news to her family and to Joseph. More likely, Mary was just scared. How about Joseph? He found out his fiancée is pregnant and he's not the father. And on top of that, God, Mary has told him that God is the father. Joseph probably was feeling betrayal, mistrust, and confusion. And notice it takes a visit from an angel for Joseph to believe that Mary is telling the truth. In addition, Joseph is probably preoccupied with the trip to Bethlehem. Consider the pressure Joseph felt as he was responsible for the lives of his pregnant wife and unborn child through such a dangerous journey. I don't imagine Joseph was feeling much joy. And consider the others in the Christmas story, from the community in Nazareth to King Herod to the religious leaders, none of them were feeling very joyful. But there is one group, we are told, who were filled with overwhelming joy. And let's read about them now. From Luke chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 8. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Amen. It was the angel, the angel who declared, For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. And then the angel was joined with a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God with an awesome and overwhelming joy. In the details of Jesus' birth, it's only the angels who seem to be filled with joy. Why? Why are they the only ones to feel joy, such overwhelming joy? What is it the angels have that no one else seems to have? Well, being from heaven, they know fully what the birth of Jesus means. Emmanuel, God with us. The Son of God, born in Bethlehem. Yeshua, the one to save us from our sins. Only the angels fully understood what Jesus' birth really meant. And the angels wanted to share that joy with others so that they too would experience joy but it would require a decision on their part. Last week in her message, Paula said something I've been thinking about all week. She said that the way to experience lasting peace begins by choosing to trust in God. It doesn't just happen, it's a choice. I wonder if the same thing is true when it comes to joy. Sansi Gaba would tell you that it is true. Her son Mo was first diagnosed with cancer at the age of nine months. By his first birthday, he was blind. Fighting cancer became a daily part of his life. He started elementary school but had to take classes virtually from his hospital bed. 
Mo became a regular patient at John Hopkins Medical Center in Baltimore, Maryland, where he lived with his mom, a single parent. As Mo spent hours in a hospital bed, he learned everything there was to know about the local baseball and football teams, the Baltimore Orioles and the Baltimore Ravens. Despite his serious illness, Mo was not one to back down from trying something new. So when he was only nine years old, he called into a local sports call-in radio show and began commenting on the Orioles and the Ravens. The announcer could hardly believe that someone so young knew so much about the Orioles and Ravens, and the announcer wanted to know more about this boy. Word got around that Mo was fighting for his life, and players and neighbors alike rallied to help Mo and his mom. When Mo was 11, he threw a ceremonial first pitch for the Orioles, and a year later he became the first person to announce an NFL draft pick written in Braille. The Braille card that Mo read from is now on display in the NFL Hall of Fame. By the time Mo was 14, he had spent 75% of his life in John Hopkins Medical Center. In spite of battling four different types of cancer, and the pain and suffering of his treatment, what characterized Mo was joy. Yes, joy. In the hospital, Mo was always singing and dancing. When he called into the radio show, he was laughing and joyful. When he met people in hospital or on the street, he loved to smile at them even though he couldn't see them. Considering the cancers he was battling and the treatment he was enduring, the joy that came from Mo was remarkable. Just days before Mo died, he received a phone call from Baltimore Ravens football player Ray Lewis. Their conversation was carried live on the air. Despite his failing health, there was no mistaking Mo's unshakable sense of joy. Joy in their conversation, and joy when they prayed together over the phone for all of Baltimore to hear. After he died, Mo's mom was asked why her son seemed to be so joyful through such a difficult life, and she replied, Mo wanted to be happy. He wanted to make people laugh. He just decided that was how it was going to be. In other words, Mo chose to have joy. Mo Gaba is an example of courage and trust and resilience and faith in God, and he is also an example to each one of us when it comes to joy. If a young boy who was blind, battling four types of cancer, who had spent 75% of his life in a hospital, could choose to be joyful, then we can too. In fact, we would be foolish not to. We may not always feel joyful, we may not even want to be joyful, but right now in heaven, Mo knows and is experiencing what the heavenly host knew to be true when the angel declared, For see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy, as he announced the birth of baby Jesus. And we know what happened to that baby. And because we know the rest of the story, because we know that Jesus grew, that Jesus healed people and taught life lessons that resonate 2,000 years later, because we know that in the greatest act of love, Jesus died for each one of us on the cross, because we know that Jesus destroyed the bonds of death when he walked out of his grave, proving that death is not the end, because we know that God made you and that he has a plan, a good plan for your life. Because we know that this is not all there is, that heaven is real and that our heavenly reunion in the future will be glorious. And because Jesus is with you right now and is always with you because he is your Savior and your Lord, because of all this and so much more, Today and every day, you can choose to have joy. Amen.
Just a couple of announcements to share with you this morning. We want to gratefully acknowledge that this week's service has been dedicated in loving memory of Dorothy McFadgen, mother of Lester McFadgen, and a donation has been made to St. Mark's in Dorothy's memory by Lester and Lois and family. And also, for the uh, St. Mark's Church family, we have been asked to make the following announcement. If you have offering or your church banks that you want to drop off, Lois McFadgen will be at St. Mark's Sunday afternoon, this afternoon from 1 until 2 o'clock, and uh, we'll be here if you want to drop those off to her. And if you're not able to drop off or drop by today, or if you're watching this service after the fact and want to drop off offering or your church bank, if you would please call the church and leave a message and someone will get back to you. And as we prepare for prayer, Evelyn and Scott are going to sing Long Awaited One.
Thank you to Evelyn, Scott, and Jacqueline. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the message that Tom has brought to us this day and the reminder that we can choose to have joy. In the midst of the busyness, in the midst of the stress and worry and concern, no matter what's happening, we can still choose to have joy because of you and your love for us. Love so profound that you sent us a savior. Lord, it gives us joy to know that you hear and answer all of our prayers. And so we bring our needs before you now. We pray for all those who are dealing with health issues, for those who are undergoing medical treatment, for those in recovery from illness or surgery or injury, for those awaiting diagnosis, that you will bless each one with comfort, strength, healing, and peace of mind. We pray especially today for Wayne McPherson, who is in hospital, and pray that he will heal quickly and that your hand of healing and blessing will be upon him. Loving God, we pray for all those who are facing troubled or difficult times. And we pray especially for those who have recently suffered the loss of a loved one or continue to mourn the loss of loved ones. And we pray that despite their sense of loss and grief, you will bless them with a special measure of joy. Lord God, in the midst of the busyness of our preparations, help us to truly experience joy this Christmas season. Help us to take time to enjoy the simple pleasure of being with family, to take time to enjoy the time we have together, to take time to be with you and to thank you for Christmas and all that it means. Lord God, we continue to pray for our world. We pray for all those who need food and shelter, and we pray for the work of PWSD and World Vision and other humanitarian relief agencies as they carry out their important work around the world. And we pray that this Christmas peace will become a reality around the world as people come to know the gift of your love and sending us a savior in Jesus Christ, a gift that fills us with everlasting joy. Dear God, we ask you to watch over us and guide us as we continue to prepare for Christmas. And may all we do and say bring glory and honor to you. For all this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And our closing carol this morning is Joy to the World.
Let us pray. May God's blessing surround you each day as you trust Him and walk in His way. May His presence within guard and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Amen. Have a great week, everyone.